Correct, as always. Um, item 3.3 .3 is the C manager's annual report. There will be a presentation. Welcome, Jim and team. And as they're gathered, I just want to do a shout out to our city manager's budget office, headed by Jim Shannon and all their staff for an uh, incredible year of, of managing the budget for 21-22 and all the work that went into preparing this annual report for the city council. And with that, I'll turn it over to Jim. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor, members of the City Council. Again, my name is Jim Shannon. I'm the City's Budget Director. I'm joined up here by uh, Bonnie Duong, our Assistant Director, Selena Ubondo, our Financial Status Coordinator, and Bryce Ball, our Operating Budget Coordinator. So uh, a big component of the senior management team here today. Uh, so um, together, we're going to provide a brief overview of the City's 21-22 annual report, which, com which uh, complies with the City Charter and the City Manager's vehicle for summarizing and analyzing the city's budget performance for the preceding fiscal year. The report is pretty technical, but it does provide um, a very comprehensive budget to actual a comparison of revenues and expenditures um, in each budget fund for the last year, and as appropriate, explanations concerning material differences between those amounts. It also provides the city council with a comparison of estimated actual ending fund balances for all funds, as well as a summary of the 21-22 year end reserves by fund. And then based on this analysis of prior year performance, updated information in the current fiscal year, and past direction from the City Council, we uh, recommend a number of adjustments in 2022-2023 for Council's consideration. Is that a good people? Good team. Okay, great. Uh, so, I did. There it goes. Uh, so overall, revenue performed generally as expected, um, and on an overall basis, expenditures ended the year within or below the budget. Uh, the, the general fund uh, had a, a surplus, um, along with most other funds that ended the year um, at balances above or at estimated levels. And when we look at, and we'll talk more about the general fund a little bit later, uh, but after rebudgets and cleanups, the general fund fund balance was about 1.6% of the modified budget which is a pretty, pretty close, close, close call. Uh, and uh, we're going to, as part of our analysis, we're, we're you know, uh, we'll be recommending various actions in 2022, 2023 to close out 21-22, uh, adjust the current budget as necessary in accordance with City Council Policy 1-18, recognize a variety of grants and reimbursements, and then we do have a few um, urgent needs in the general fund and in a few special and capital funds that we'll talk about a little bit later. Here, just want to uh, just a couple of quick highlights on the big picture economic conditions. There's a lot of things that we monitor in, in the budget office, but but do want to just highlight a couple of them here. Uh, one of them is employment, and you can see from this graph here that we are sort of back to pre-pandemic employment levels as of the end of June. Um, obviously, the economic picture is changing, um, and so this is definitely we're going to keep an, an eye on it. But it's it's definitely notable that we're we're above pre-pandemic levels. And even when you look at our unemployment rate uh, of 2.3% back in June, uh, is, um, is below where we were before the pandemic and above the prior years of 5.5%. Real estate, as folks know, was really strong uh, for all, all of 2021 and for this, the first half of 21, 2022. 20, you can see it on this graph here that looks at medium home prices as well as property sales. It's a really good barometer of how the real estate market is, is going. Uh, so uh, the, at the end of June, uh, the single family medium home was 1.6 million, which was 5.6% above what it was in the prior, uh, at that same time last year. But sales certainly have fallen off um, over, you know, from the January to June period, sales were down about 12% from where they were from the, the prior year. So um, as the Fed raises the interest rates and the corresponding mortgage rates rise, um, that's definitely going to have an impact on the real estate market as will potentially any other economic impacts in the Valley. So we'll definitely be keeping an eye on this as we go forward. Looking specifically at some of the revenues in the general fund, uh, which kind of shows our, our top four here, and really as property tax and sales tax goes, so goes the general fund. Um, those were all performing well um, in 21, 2022, 20, and uh, utility tax and business tax, uh, a little bit more steady there, and we'll talk about those in just a moment. But just wanted to kind of show the big picture there between the property and sales tax and sort of everything else. Kind of doing a year-over-year -year comparison, this is kind of a, a, an interesting chart. You can really see the impact of the recovery from the pandemic in 21, 20, 22. So you see 
the percent change on the very right-hand column there indicates some pretty significant growth in a lot of categories. Um, you know, particularly we'll just mention sales, sales tax, where, um, which is a really tricky one for us. So, you know, Selena over here is responsible for most of the general fund revenue es estimates, though we arm wrestle over uh, a few of them. Sales tax, we really uh, uh, went back and forth on because we got some information in May of 2022 based on the performance of January, February, and March. And so we had sort of 20% quarter over quarter growth over already really heavy growth. And so, okay, well, what's the fourth quarter going to look like? Because we don't get that data actually until August. And so it really went back and forth, back and forth, and we ended up being really good. So we, we called that within uh, $60,000. So that was pretty, pretty impressive there on sales tax. We were a little bit, um, we had a little bit extra in the various other categories compared to the budget to the estimate, but um, that was good because you might remember last year we had a, we were here last year and we had a huge um, surge in sales tax growth that caught us all by surprise. So at least this year we had a little bit more of a warning and we're able to plan for it as part of our, uh, our uh, budget process. A couple other things to note here, uh, business tax, you see a pretty big jump there in business tax. That's mostly because of the card rooms were fully operational in 21, 20, 22. Uh, fees and charges is the same thing. So we had a lot of programs that weren't really operating and now in 21, 22, they were. Um, similarly with fines and penalties, we had some uh, parking citations was the biggest driver there. Uh, T T TOT actually ended the year better than we thought, which is good. So we had a year investment of 9 million. It came in at 10.5. And then we had the monster year for the real property transfer tax. Um, huge, huge growth there. We have that estimate for 22, 23 down at 65 million. We're really gonna keep an eye on that. That's really influenced by how um, large property transfers go. So we'll have to really keep a close eye on that. And I'm gonna turn this over to Bonnie. Thanks, Jim. Um, so the general fund ended the year with a gross fund balance of $559 million, um, of which $51.4 million was above the estimate that we had used to develop the 22-23 adopted budget. Um, this represents 2.4% of the modified budget. So after we do all the net required adjustments to close out 21-22, the ending fund balance variance was $33.7 million, which is 1.6% of the modified budget. Additional fund balance was primarily generated um, by stronger anticipated revenue performance in several small categories, such as fees, rates, and charges, utility tax, card room business tax, and TOT. And then um, we also had expenditure savings in all of, all of our categories, um, mainly in pr personal services, and we had some in non-personal equipment, citywide, and capital. So of the um, additional fund balance that was left over, um, this is the proposed allocation of that fund balance. Um, started off with $51.4 million, and then after all the required adjustments um, of $17.6 million, we had fund balance of $33.7 million. That's recommended to be allocated um, by um, $19 million for the required technical uh, rebalancing actions. And those actions um, align already with approved revenue estimates and expenditure adjustments um, with the most current tracking information, reallocates funding for ongoing appropriations based on updated needs and information, corrects technical issues from 22-23 adopted budget, or complies with actions previously authorized by city council. Then the next, um, the next category we have is grants, reimbursements, and fee activities, which resulted in, um, it's a net zero action, but it resulted in a net reduction of $125,000 in both the expenditure side and the revenue side. Then we allocated $4.5 million to two urgent fiscal and program needs, which we'll discuss later on, um, which then leaves a remaining fund balance about $10.4 million. Um, that remaining fund balance is being recommended to be distributed per the city council policy 1-18. Um, so $7.6 million to the budget stabilization reserve and then $2.8 million to the IT sinking fund reserve. So of the $19 million that's allocated um, for required technical rebalancing actions, here on the slide is just a list of some of the larger adjustments that we're recommending. Um, $5 million to the contingency reserve um, which brings it from $41 million to $46 million. And this is in accordance with council policy 1-18, which provides for the maintenance of a minimum 3% contingency reserve in the general fund to meet unexpected circumstances arising from financial or public emergencies um, that requires immediate funding. Um, so just wanna note that the contingency reserve um, adjustment is usually made as part of the annual report. 
um, but the $5 million is a relatively high adjustment. And this is mostly due to the significant amount of funding that was allocated as part of the 22-23 proposed budget process. Um, the little bit of additional beginning fund balance and sales tax, sales tax revenues that was recognized and allocated at the end of the year. And a significant amount of expenditures rebudgeted as part of the adopted budget process and as part of this annual report. The next item here is the $3.8 million um, that has been set aside in the fire station and FF&E reserve. Um, and this is also in accordance with uh, the mayor's uh, budget message, with direction from the mayor's budget message um, that sets aside um, available excess general fund ending fund balance to help address future cost overruns anticipated um, from these measure two capital improvement projects for fire station. Um, so fire station 8, 23, 32, and 36, and the 911 call center upgrade projects are tentatively scheduled to be completed within the next five years. As of spring, um, the projects were anticipated to exceed the current budget allocation by a total of two to $4 million and anticipated to need an additional $5 million for FF&E. So that brings uh, the total cost overrun to about seven to $9 million. And with this adjustment of the 3.8, um, it helps bring that down, that, that need down. The next adjustment we have is uh, $3.78 million that's being transferred to the City Hall Debt Service Fund uh, to reflect um, a correction for a 22-23 allocation change. Um, and then to also correct the allocation cost related to the August 2020 lease revenue bond issuance. But then we set aside $1.4 million in the Community and Economic Recovery Reserve to replenish funding to prior levels um, and provide sufficient funding for, cities, for the city's potential financial commitment toward the I isolation and quarantine program managed by the county. And we have $1.25 million for the City Hall Rehabilitation Project. This one repurposes um, project savings from the City Hall campus expansion that must be um, reallocated for infrastructure improvements at City Hall. $750,000 for the Fire Station 8 Garage Demolition and Site Cleanup Project. Um, it demolishes an, an abandoned garage behind the fire station and um, helps with the slope stabilization there and the erosion control. $700,000 to establish the police helicopter engine overhaul reserve, which will support required maintenance of the helicopter's engine and provide for the installation of a rental engine to ensure little to no downtime for the air support program. And then we have net zero adjustments um, in business tax where we're increasing the carbon business tax revenues by 2 million, but then decreasing the cannabis business tax um, by $2 million. Great, thanks Bonnie. Um, so all the things that Bonnie just went over were uh, required, we call required technical or re rebalancing actions, things that we sort of have to do as long as there's resources there to do it, as well as prior council direction. We, we do have a couple of items that the city manager is recommending as an urgent and fiscal program need that would normally be uh, brought forward as part of the proposed budget process, but we think they, they're really important and need to be brought, brought forward now. Uh, so the first is $3 million for homeless management services, uh, which is you know, an, an issue that the city council and community and administration has been you know, grappling with um, in a lot of in, in, uh, innovative ways, as well as um, uh, trying different you know, policy and program uh, uh, processes to sort of get at uh, the, the challenges that we are dealing with here. And so we do have $3 million that is set aside um, to be able to um, address issues that we have passed council direction on, including um, uh, potential uh, issues related to um, an RV parking ordinance and manage RV, RV parking, um, some security um, after abatements have taken place, uh, potential uh, abatements along creek, creek sites, so a number of, of actions, we wanna make sure we have some funding in there that we can flexibly use. We'll also be coming forward um, as part of a number of actions on um, November 29th in response to prior council direction to recommend some more specific funding from this allo allocation. And then we have 1.5 million for uh, the fire department uh, to enact a, a lateral uh, fire, fire paramedic academy. So about $900,000 or so, or about a million dollars for overtime for instructor costs and about $500,000 um, for equipment and supplies for the academy. Um, as, as council is aware, we do have a pretty significant shortfall in active para paramedics. And so this is an intent to try to be uh, aggressive and to have a new uh, paramedic academy in early 2023 um, to try to shore up some of those um, 
uh, ranks. And then so after we do all of those items, we have about you know, $10.4 million remaining balance. And so the City Council Policy 1-18 tells us how to distribute those. Um, and so we need to be looking for either uh, adding to our next year's projected deficit reserve, which we don't have a projected deficit, so we don't need to do that. Um, look to allocate funding to the budget stabilization reserve, trying to get up to an overall general fund reserve level of 10 of 10 percent, and also to look at our unmet deferred infrastructure needs. And so, based on that, we're coming forward with a recommendation of uh, 7.6 million here for the budget stabilization reserve. Would we'll take that reserve up to 61 million dollars, and when you combine that with the general workers' compensation liability reserve and our contingency reserve that Bonnie talked about, we'd be at a level of about 8 percent in the general fund. I mean, kind of the highest in memory, really, um, and uh, which is a really good place to be at um, uh, when you, you think about all of our general purpose reserves, especially as we start heading into a potentially recessionary period. And so having that backstop is super important. It was also a little bit of unfinished business that council directed us as part of the March budget message to set aside funding in the budget stabilization reserve. We did some, but we really needed to do more. And so this gets us much, much closer. Um, and then we do have $2.8 million going into the IT sinking fund reserve. For a total amount now of $6.5 million. One of the primary uses of that is to eventually replace our FMS and ER ERP system, which is going to cost more than $20 million, so trying to shore up some, some funding there. And just a, a couple touching points on a couple of other major um, city operations. We have um, the airport um, definitely had a pretty good bounce back year from where it was in the pandemic, so passenger activity increased by over 130%. Um, and revenue performance exceeded the budget estimates by over six, six million. And we've got um, a, a pretty healthy passenger activity projected for 22, 23, so good news there. Also some good news in the San Jose Clean Energy Fund, which was um, a little bit of a rocky start over the, the last year. And we're able, with the uh, rate adjustments enacted by the city council back last December and the lower PCIA cost, um, the fund balance ended at 80.6 million, and we're currently projected to end the current year at 171 million. So, which is really good news. We need to get our reserves up in that fund. Uh, looking at some of the capital revenues we have here, uh, building and structure and construction excise the blue and gold bars. A little bit of a downward slope. Those are revenues generated from private development construction, um, and so you know ended the year sort of at budget, maybe a little bit better, but we ended up taking that budget down over the course of the year. So we need to keep an eye on that downward trend. The gray bars is a construction and conveyance tax, heavily influenced, of course, by the real estate market. Super strong year, a record year in 21, 20, 22. We expect that to come down pretty significantly uh, in 22, 23. I think we have an estimate of 50 million, 50 million, um, and it came in at about 65. And then we have just a number of other, uh, I mean, a number, a bunch of other uh, cleanups and recommended adjustments throughout all of our city's funds that we did, all of our closeout analysis. Maybe just a couple others that I'll, I'll highlight is because TOT did come in better. We do have some adjustments in the TOT fund because uh, we had sort of $2.3 million of revenue in the TOT fund, uh, which enables us to um, allocate some additional funding back to uh, the Convention Cultural Affairs Fund or Fund 5536, as well as to Cultural Arts and Grants and the CVB. It also allows us to uh, take down the transfer from the American Rescue Plan Fund to Fund 536. Um, because it doesn't really need that help anymore, which is good because we had assumed some savings as part of our overall budget plan for the AR ARP fund, which didn't really materialize yet. And so we were able to capture that savings of 1.5 million without having to um, make any other allocations or adjustments within that uh, program. So I think with that, there's quite a bit. We'll, we'll pause here and just again, wanna thank our senior management team and everybody in the budget office who puts, I mean, this document comes together in about three and a half weeks. And so really just really appreciative of, the, uh, of my team and all the department staff who works with us to put this document together. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. That's about 100 pages a week. It's impressive. All right, uh, let's go to the public. Blair Beekman. Hi, uh, Blair Beekman here. Thanks for uh, your mid-October meeting today. Uh, I guess to start off, uh, just a, a thank you, uh, you know, for this item, a yearly report. Um, I, I've spoke, there were a lot of items on the consent calendar that I've spoken about over the past few weeks that I hope you can remember <laughs> at this time and, and can be useful to yourselves in how you voted for the consent calendar of the, for its items. With that said, um, this, this uh, report 
it offers a, a nice broad range of uh, city programs that uh, you're, you'll be working on uh, in this past year and hopefully into 2023. Uh, to quickly offer, I'm real sorry about the events of uh, uh, four uh, deaths that have happened this past week around pedestrian issues. And uh, I, tomorrow's meeting uh, around Vision Zero issues will be uh, really helpful and important. I think, and you guys know my feelings about the importance of uh, having open, accountable public policies and practices along with the technology. And, and when you do those things together um, in what will be possibly a, a year in this year and next year of a, a lot more surveillance technology than previous years, um, and it's budgeting, good luck how we talk about uh, open public policies. It doesn't have to be a fearful subject. And that's, that's an important concept I hope we can all better work towards tomorrow and, uh, and this fall and into our future. Uh, with that said, talk about uh, future, oh boy, I got lots of cards here. To talk about a future of uh, city manager items, it's my sincere hope, I've spoken often here, that uh, into the next administration, we could learn to talk about the city manager role at public at uh, uh, when she speaks on agenda items at the beginning of each meeting. That can be a time for public comment. I hope we can learn how to expand the public comment time a bit more and at least have those conversations. Thank you. Joe Border. Hi, um, I was listening with great interest uh, to all the the adjustments that are being suggested and possibly voted on, and I just thought maybe we could have some type of a fund in the future where when these adjustments are being made, we go back and we say, hey, what are the things that were brought up at the at the last budget hearings that were not addressed that people really in the public were, were pining for? And so one of them, of course, we'll talk about later, so I won't bring it up, but the 8.3, you know, we'll talk about later, but it seems to me that there's some extra money and that certainly when um, a group of people in the public something's been voted on and you know say two years ago unanimously to make it happen maybe that we could have a fund where it says it's like a called an integrity fund or accountability fund or something like that where when we when we have pandemics happen or we have unforeseen events happen but we've made a commitment to the public maybe we could draw upon those funds to fill that gap instead of putting it out uh, what appears to be maybe years into the future so just a suggestion it seemed like we had a little extra money to play with thank you Back to the council. Okay, uh, thank you. Appreciate the input from the public. I want to assure everybody there's no extra money. <laughs> we wish there was, but we got a lot of other needs, um, and we're not funding them. But we're uh, we're doing a pretty good job, at least, uh, uh, really preparing for what we know is a, is a tough. Uh, is likely to be a very tough economy next year, and I really appreciate the work uh, of Jim and Bonnie and the whole budget team. Uh, Jennifer and her leadership over the years, um, being able to get to 8% of operating reserve, uh, operating expenses now in reserve. Um, as high as it's been since we, I've been here in probably in a couple of decades. Uh, and um, we did it through some tough times and I appreciate that it was hard to do. Uh, I think next year and the following year, the council and the community will be very grateful uh, because this is what's gonna help us weather the, the tough times and, and keep people employed and keep services in place. So I, I appreciate everybody pulling together to make that happen. Um, Council Member Arenas. Thank you, Mayor. I, I agree with you. I, I think we, we need to be very conservative about what we do with our funds. Um, and I think our administration has been very thoughtful. Um, it's reflected in, in this memo. One of the things that I wanted to actually focus on and just um, really commend both Jim and um, and our city manager Jennifer and the folks in 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 Jim's um, department is there was a concern earlier this year about overruns construction overruns for our fire stations and uh, Councilmember Carrasco and I. Uh, submitted a memo uh, for to ask for exactly this to to prepare for some of the things that we are anticipating are going to increase and that is con construction costs and so 
Um, I'm absolutely just grateful um, that we're doing this ahead of time and, and not risking um, something to our fire stations that are in the pipeline of getting built. But we're anticipating this this overrun, and so I'm I'm absolutely just grateful. Thank you so much for for finding this, for prioritizing this. Of course, there was a memo that we wrote, but but you making it possible um, is just absolutely um, wonderful. Uh, not only for our, our fire department, but really for our whole community because it, it allows us to manage other funds in ways um, that can benefit um, everyone uh, within uh, the measure T parameters. So so anyways, I just wanna, once again, just thank you. Uh, everything was wonderful. Thank you so much for being so considerate about our city and, um, and how we are uh, prioritizing our, our budget. Thank you. Oh, and with that, I will um, make a motion to approve. Second. All right, thank you, council member. Looking for other colleagues, with their hands raised. If not, I'm gonna jump in with questions. questions. Okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I see physical hands, but not virtual. <laughs> so I'll go all the way to my right, council member Cohen and then council member Foley. I just realized that I'm logged in as you and I didn't have a button to raise my hand. Uh -huh. so. oh. I was wondering why I couldn't see anybody. I'm gonna log out. That's the anyway, <laughs> um, I know since all the staff showed up, I, should, I need to ask somebody a question. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for that and, and, and the stewardship of the budget and, and it's, it's good to see that things are healthier. It's such, it's such a volatile time. It's really hard to really know what's happening now, what's gonna happen next year. but. It's good to things, see that things came out on the plus side in most cases this year. We don't know what's gonna happen next year. My, I have one question on one item. I saw that the on the clean energy reserve fund is the ending balance now is pretty significant up to 170 million. There was a target, I just don't remember what it was. There was a target for that number at which point we are able to begin to invest in things like incentives for conversion to electricity and doing uh, EV programs. What is that number that we're aiming for? Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Lori Mitchell, Director of Community Energy. Um, you're right, that number um, is about 180 million. So our operating expenses are about a million dollars a day and we are targeting 180 days of operating expenses in a reserve. Um, we are planning to bring forward a reserve policy to Council in December and so that's something that you can consider formally there. So that one, we're, it looks like we're at 170 according to the estimates, is that right? Yes, but we have to get to the end of the fiscal year. At the end of the fiscal year, we'll be at 170. And then, and then hopefully if things continue to do well, we're at that point where we can begin to start investing some of those ex the extra revenue in some of those programs. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, yeah. Council Member Foley. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for the report and the uh, review of the annual report numbers. While I realize this is a snapshot for the end of the fiscal year, which is a full almost six months ago, I'm more concerned about looking forward. So I really appreciate the efforts in this, in your uh, adjustments to put aside funds in reserves. You mentioned earlier that we, we like to have 3%, uh, and that's of the general fund, I'm assuming, not of all of our funds combined. Yeah, and, and just to clarify, so we have, we have uh, two percentages that we have to hit so according to council policy. So the one that we have to get is a contingency reserve. That needs to be 3% 3, 3 of general fund operating, budget operating expenditures. We have a policy target of 10% 10, 10 um, for all of our general purpose reserves, which is the contingency reserve plus the budget stabilization reserve plus our catastrophic workers' compensation and general liability claims reserves. All three of those, we want to equal 10, 10%. We're now at 8 Okay, so we're close, but we're not quite there, but I still feel good about that, given where the concerns of where the economy is heading and our need to hire more employees and compensate our employees uh, appropriately in order to retain and, and, uh, and attract. 
So I, the, the two numbers that I'm honing in on the future, and I realize this is a look back, but I'm looking at future, and those are the two that are related to real estate values and real estate transactions. And that's the property taxes, which we, we won't yet see a reduction in property values or property tax assessments until 23-24, because the tax bills are already out for this year, and it was based on a July 1st number. So while uh, there's a projection of a drop in real estate values in the residential market anyway, of as much as 20%, that's gonna affect the transfer tax number, and it eventually it will, it will affect the property tax number. So how do we, because we're, we're starting to rely on the Measure E transfer tax and had a, a quite a good number of a uh, good amount of income last year, 110 million. Uh, but do you have ideas on where that number might be in the coming year? I know it's kind of hard to predict, but market is dropping, and there are not as many sales. And and what are may not be triggered by the measured E transfer tax. Yeah, correct. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting year for that. You know, we do have very little experience with, with this tax. This is really just our second full full year of it, I think. So, oh. um, you know, we had 110 million in 21, 20, 22. We knew that was not going to last. That was heavily influenced by some pretty large commercial property transactions. Um, we have it at 65 million currently. Um, right now, we're on track to meet or it, exceed it. So right now through, you know, the data that we have, we're really good. It just really depends on what's going to happen later on. It's really dependent on if you just get a few large property transfers, you're sort of good. If you don't get a few of those, you're in the hole. Right. Um, so our, our intent when we came up with the city council policy governing Measure E, because Measure E is a general fund revenue source. We, we allocate it for homelessness prevention and, and support and affordable right. housing. Um, our intent is to try to budget that relatively conservative so we don't get overextended. And we do have a, a, a good chunk of money in reserves that, even though we have plans for it, isn't necessarily committed. So, you know, we, even if it does fall short this year, we're not in an immediate sort of panic mode. But um, we will be monitoring that very closely. We come out um, every, every uh, couple of months with a bi-monthly financial report. We'll, we'll keep an eye on that for sure. That goes to the PISVIS committee. Um, and then we'll have a better idea of where that's going when we come to you for the mid-year budget review in uh, fe early February. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. I, I'm very concerned about where our economy is headed, you know, the stock market's not reacting positively to things, and to what's happening in the market, and a recession uh, will be, well, it's already, I, I don't know if they've called a recession yet, but it sure feels like one because our dollars aren't buying as much. So uh, in, in the budget process next year, we will need to, and council will need to be very conservative about allocating funds to any new programs or even considering new programs because it, it's, this is the time to tighten our budget and to hunker down in, in our, and, and depend on our, not depend on our reserves, but build our reserves and have them there because we may be in a time where we're gonna depend on them. So I really appreciate that we're at 8%. Look forward to, get to getting to 10%. Do you have strategies on how, on how we're gonna raise that by 2%? <laughs> no? Uh, well, uh, council direction would always be great. So yeah. here we go. <laughs> can go to Vegas and double it. Yeah, no, I'm not <laughs> not a proponent of that one. That sounds a little risky, and I know you meant that in joke. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you very much. All right. Um, I'll note that since Councilmember Cohen is no longer usurping my computer, uh, if there's anyone else who'd like to raise their hand, I can see your hand now. Nope. Okay. I just had a couple questions. Um, the uh, Going back to fire stations first, yeah, great to see the, the 3.8 million allocated for either FF&E or I guess to fill some of the gap we have in Measure T. Look like from the report, the gap could be as large as 9 million, and that includes both FF&E and overruns, is that right? That, that is right at the time we had the estimates. I mean, I think that's gonna be changing potentially. We've been you know, continuing to evaluate where the Measure T program is. Um, yeah. we, we do have direction to come back to you all in um, early 2023 calendar year to give some more specific recommendations about where we're at and how we can try to close some of the gaps. Um, you know, it's, it's more likely that that gap could grow rather than shrink. Yeah, okay, you anticipated my question. Sounds like we, we're continuing to get more recent data. Okay, thank you for that. And then also speaking of fire stations, 
And um, somebody from Fire may want to speak on this because I don't expect you to be an expert on this, but or maybe maybe Matt could help. Um, I know we're, we're we're throwing in seven hundred thousand to take out the garage on Station Eight, but I'm hoping we'll begin construction. Well, not immediately, but I know it will be soon on Section Eight or Station Eight's replacement along East Santa Clara Street. I guess my question is, why wouldn't we wait and demolish everything at once, assuming that would seem to be cheaper rather than doing it piecemeal? Thank you, Mayor. Matt Kano, Director of Public Works. I will need to follow up for the, to spe the specifics, but the, the garage is separate from the rest of the fire station. It's back behind, behind the actual fire station building. It's a separate, separate building, and there are... Um, so I'll have to follow up to see, to get a better answer to your question about why we can't wait, but I think there are environmental reasons we need to get rid of that sooner rather than later. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's all going in the creek eventually. Uh, is there, uh, is the demolition of the station itself part of Measure T budget today, or is that something we need to go find budget for? It's not currently budgeted. Oh. So we'll have to figure out figure that out as we go. So that may or may not get demolished. I think Good. it will need to eventually get demolished, but yeah. we still need to figure out the financing for that. Um, I will go back and check on that as well, though, and follow up. Okay. Thank you for that, Matt. Um, and then I had one last question. I guess it wasn't a question, just a, uh, a note of joy that uh, Measure E revenues, uh, the affordable housing revenues came in so high, $110 million last year. I know we won't probably see that number again for a while, but uh, boy, do we need every dollar. So I'm really grateful to the residents of our city for supporting that measure uh, and for all those who came together uh, uh, to to make that happen, uh, particularly at, at home, at SoCon Valley at home and, and their, the whole team uh, that uh, got that over the goal line. Okay. Um, any other questions before we vote on Council Member motion? All right, let's vote. Jimenez? Yes. Prowlis? Yes. Cohen? Aye. Carrasco? Aye. Davis? Aye. Esparza? Yes. Arenas? Yes. Foley? Aye. Mahan? Aye. Jones? Aye. Ricardo? Aye. Thank you.